All right. Hello. Okay, can start. Okay. Yes, inshallah. You can, you can, you, you, you can lead. Who, me? Yes, yes, if okay. you like. <laughs> um, alhamdulillah, uh, a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we, we did meet an amazing Chinese sister yesterday in our class. I I don't think anybody who is sincere to 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 know the truth will spend two hours with us in class. Yeah? And alhamdulillah, as, as expected, uh, with Sister Lisa, she would invite her for a meal uh, today um, in a restaurant, right? And alhamdulillah, so this is something in which um, your as Sister Lisa, I'm sure I have explained to you and I explained to you yesterday, to be Muslim, very straightforward. And I, I did say before, to understand the beauty of Islam, if you are not a Muslim, it's quite tricky because you can you can you can go to uh, many boundaries and uh, you read many books. But unless you are in that state, as for example, as I say, if you want to learn how to swim, you need to be in a swimming pool. If you want to learn how to 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 ride a bike bicycle, you do need to be on the bicycle. So therefore, it's difficult for us. And yesterday we did we did say it's difficult to um, explain the beauty of Islam unless you are Muslim. And alhamdulillah, yesterday, again, this is all with Allah, so we have, was it an Uzbek sister yesterday? Uh, sister uh, Sa, um, Zainab? Yeah. Zainab was, your, your, what is, what's his, what's the, I, I don't know what's the sister's name, the Uzbek sister? Do you know the name? I don't know. She doesn't know the name. <laughs> okay. And she, she reverted about, maybe about two, uh, okay. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, yes, yes. Alhamdulillah. She reverted about two, three years ago, I think. Yeah. And again, everything is in Allah's plan. That you know, I explained to her how uh, she even was so. Uh, and I asked her. We asked her, how was it when you take shahada? Yes. How did you feel? And she said, oh, it changes the life completely. You're no, you're, 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 you're not a slave of the world. It's, it's on my own mouth. And this is how it is. Islam makes you completely, alhamdulillah, uh, free from any needs of this world. And again, as I said in the beginning of the class, also how one of my students passed away. Um, so we do not know when is our last last breath. Yeah. So um, it is an honor, alhamdulillah, to meet uh, the sister um, that um, yesterday. And let let me correct myself. Um, sorry, what is your name? Sister since Shin Yi, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yes. Um that that I think you're already a Muslim, but you don't know it. Yeah. And we discussed about yeah, oneness of God yesterday. We talked about Tawheed, um, in three aspect, aspects of Tawheed. Um, and we discussed about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in, in a short instance. And I think you're ready to take your shahada. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shall we shall we say it? Yes, say Bismillah. Yes. So Okay, Bismillah. Bismillah. In the name of Allah. In the name of Allah. Yes. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abdu. Wa Rasulu. Which means I bear witness. That none has the right to be worshipped. Has that none has the right that to none be has the right to be worshipped. None has the right to be worshipped. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I have witness. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. And Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his slave? Is his slave? And his messenger? And his messenger. You know, I, I'm almost choking in tears. Which had happened. Me too. Me too. Me too. I wasn't expecting this, honestly, genuinely. I I just saw it on what's uh, on Skype. I said, "Oh, you are online." I thought, "Oh, this is you know." Let's just let's just uh, tune in. You know, we didn't expect yeah. this, and and yeah. look how our guides. You know. Yeah, alhamdulillah. It's amazing. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. It's a privilege to. Yeah, it's a privilege to share this experience with her in person, and inshallah, we, you know, hopefully, you can, you know, feel the, the happiness in her voice as well. 
Alhamdulillah. It is, it, 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 and you have, of course, you have all oh, the, the support of our sisters. Yes, Sister Lisa, especially, and all the sisters. Yeah. And hopefully, you can come to our class next week. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you can just call Sister Lisa online, whatever it is, and she can help you with your, your journey. This is a new journey for you and for us, sisters, that you have just taken Shahada. This, this is a journey that you will remember for the rest of your life because this is an ability for you to to be able to enter paradise yeah and i'm so happy sisters uh, who you just joined remember the sister yesterday she just took shahada online yeah <laughs> and i mean i mean oh me too me too it's just an, it's so so beautiful to witness this and in such a way that never would have imagined you know when i met her today I wasn't thinking of pushing her but because i saw the sincerity in her heart and um, you can see isn't it true because yeah. I, I i can see from her with her face she was looking at me and I was I was sick yesterday. I was not well, and then she was still uh, trying to understand what I was trying to say. And, uh, alhamdulillah. May Allah reward you as well for your, you know, for giving her the, the, the da'wah That um, inshallah, this is your on your scale of good deeds for you know for a lifetime. Inshallah, even after when we die. Yeah, inshallah, it's beautiful to witness. Thank you for this opportunity, and um, yeah, and it's and I'm just so glad that you know because. She reminds me of me as well, you know, six years ago, I took my shahada around this time, actually, funny enough, with you. So for me to experience this with someone else now, it's, 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 it's amazing. It is. This, this made no other. There's one brother who, he, he, he met us yesterday. He wanted to take shahada, but he wanted to, to wait for Monday. And with his parents, who are not Muslims, take shahada. I said, why wait for Monday? Well, he just wanted to take shahada with his parents. His parents are not Muslims. So... <laughs> What I mean, we hope that all she is still alive on Monday. Inshallah, inshallah, and we'll make to ask Yeah, alhamdulillah. So I'm so happy for you, and I'm sure Sister Lisa is well equipped with her <laughs> <laughs> ability to help you with all the books and all these yes. uh, guidance. Yes, yes. And yes, the good yes, thing yes. about about meeting uh, another revert, uh, Sister Lisa, that uh, the, you they would understand. Oh, that, I will help you. Help. Feeling, you would understand how yeah, the yeah, so you face. You, know, you do not need to tell your parents if you do not need to. Yeah, for the moment. Yeah, so, so it is important yeah. that you keep this to yourself for the moment. Yeah, and then uh, when you're ready, you can always tell them whenever you're ready. Yeah. Jazakallah <laughs> well, yeah. khair. Anything we'll you want to say, Sister Shinli? Anything you want to say? I don't know. Uh, thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. For thank you very us, much. You yeah, know, allowing us to witness it, this. It is really very inspiring that you just took shahada, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday you were uh, on a journey. Uh, now you're you're sorry. on a different journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Any sisters need to want to say anything for the sister who just took shahada? I'm so grateful. She, you know, in at the moment she was. Uh, you know, I'm grateful that I saw her and. I, and I, so I that, that you are the one, alhamdulillah, you brought her to class, right? And oh, yes, okay. you brought her to class, and alhamdulillah, it's all, it's all Allah's plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so it, you know, it's like a call for a celebration. Yes, oh. yes, definitely. You know, it's funny, she, she's actually, a, she does documentaries, and she wants me to feature in her documentary, and I'll be happy to do so as well, about yeah, Islam. Yeah, I, 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 Lisa, don't worry, the first thing she asked me, she said, don't worry, I have to tell Lisa to, 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 to be featured. <laughs> yeah, you can count on me, you can count on me. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, you know, thank we are you here so for much. You. Yes. Yeah, all of us are here yeah, for yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, we are all here for you. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Hopefully next week, uh, more sisters will come. And the thing the only thing you need to do is just take a shower after today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And begin a new life. And I'm so sure this sister will, will, will teach you a little bit of the press. Yes. Uh, you do not need to do everything by tomorrow. Right. Mm -hmm. It comes in stages. Everybody's different. Some people are able to do the 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 press. Um, <laughs> By one week, two weeks, some people take one month. It's up to you, but do it as quickly as possible. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, in, I'm still in tears. Me because. too, me too. It was just so and, spontaneous, but it just felt so right. It's, it's just a big, big <laughs> present for me. Yeah, of course. After the Umrah, alhamdulillah. Of course, and, yeah. And, and this is, yeah, you, you, you have added, alhamdulillah, to the happiness of, of, of our class, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And and hopefully you continue the journey with us, yeah, and and that we will we'll meet you again next week, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah khair. We're gonna head off now, but we want to say jazakallah khair and uh, may Allah reward you as well. Inshallah, we speak soon. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Wa alaikum salam.
Alhamdulillah. Sisters, can you imagine um, a person was chosen by Allah to be a Muslim? And this is how what we always been discussing in our class, that all of us are on a journey. But this journey that we are taking, we must take it very seriously. Again, as I said in, in class yesterday, how one of my students passed away. Um, I think he was hit. He was he was hit by a by a bus. Subhanallah. Right. But the good news is, I'm sorry. This is a good news for me, that one week before or one month before this, he went for his Umrah. Alhamdulillah. So whatever it is, any good deeds that you want to do, you need to do it immediately. And Alhamdulillah, this is. I think, I think Sister Zainab, you must have realized when we, we talked to her yesterday, is that she. She was very sincere. Nobody would, would nobody would not be sincere for by staying in the class yesterday for two hours, listening to our talks and all this. Yeah. So, um, just a call her for bringing her to, to the class. Yeah. And let's provide her support, inshallah. Yeah. By being with her and reminding her about the dean, inshallah. Yeah. And I'm sure she's in good hands, inshallah, with Sister Lisa. Yeah. In in her journey onwards. So as I said, um, this is how it is. Yeah. Some people are taken away by Allah. Some people take shahada, alhamdulillah. And some people, subhanAllah, they, they, they have been misguided. They started to um, commit sins deliberately. Everybody must realize that one day all of us will meet Allah. Yeah? And in that journey that we have in this life, which, which is not long, right? As it, it was, it was only few weeks ago that I was telling you that I'm going to Umrah, then I'm back now. And uh, something in those lines that the time is not going to wait for us. We need to catch up with time. This time, the, the, this, this thing called time that we are always complaining about. Yeah, some people say there's no time um, or to do this, to do that, right? For me personally, there's no such thing as no time. If you think that time is so precious, you will make sure that you make time, right? To well seek knowledge, to memorize the Quran, to do the adhkar, right? Um, as as you know, I I wasn't I wasn't well <clears throat> yesterday at all, and even today. Uh, but alhamdulillah, I'm I do need to make the effort in order to make sure that I was present yesterday, and this is this is this is in in all loss with all loss. Qadar is decree. If if I wasn't there yesterday, the class wouldn't be there, and the sister wouldn't be meeting us. The sister wouldn't meet Sister Lisa and all this. Um, so it, it, everything, and I'm so glad that now, Alhamdulillah, that we uh, made the effort to in the in the illness that I was still there, and and this is how it is that when we make the effort, Alhamdulillah, then things will go according to what Allah has. <coughs> yeah. It is. Um, you may remember that I was always in tears. I think at the end of the day, um, yeah, because I know all of us must really be truly privileged to be chosen by Allah um, in Islam. Not everybody get this to was selected by Allah in Islam. And I was so moved. And sometimes, sometimes when you talk to people, uh, you're just moved to tears that you know you just want to convince them look this is the right religion this is the truth and you know alhamdulillah we are we are so honored that allah chose us to be muslims yeah and this is how we should you know subhanallah spread the message of islam to everybody yeah? because none of us wants any one of family members especially to be in hellfire yeah so this is a journey in allah subhanallah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us subhanallah uh, uh, the the ability yeah to redeem ourselves in less than one month right in the month of Ramadan that a month in which I'm sure you know that a lot of people are taking things for granted that means all they do or care is that Ramadan is a time for them to not to eat not to drink full stop and some of them some people may make the effort to okay this is a month for me to lose weight yeah. And that's about it. And at the end of the Ramadan, what a person may achieve is just perhaps no food and no drink, perhaps lose weight, and that's about it. And you are the same person as you were before. Remember, Allah does not give this opportunity to everyone to meet Ramadan. Remember, one of my students just passed away a few days ago in the Janazah was uh, on, on Friday. 
he wasn't given an opportunity and he, he was just that close to Ramadan and he, he couldn't enter Ramadan. Yeah, and we know from many hadith, for example, one hadith in which a person died um, as a martyr, yeah, and another person died not as a martyr, but he was able to meet the next Ramadan, and the person who did not die as a martyr was able to enter paradise even earlier, yet yeah? earlier than the person who um, died as a martyr. So that Ramadan itself, it may be or it should be a life-changing experience for all of us. <clears throat> so something that all of us uh, should really yeah, be looking forward to. I remember a few years ago when I was teaching in, in a house just opposite the mosque, and I was teaching the, the, the daughter, and daughter was actually looking forward to Ramadan, but the mother was saying something like, oh, Ramadan is coming, I'm not looking forward to it, and subhanAllah, Ability for you and I to enter Jannah, you are not looking forward to it. For sure, we understand, right, that that journey to get the best place in paradise or even to enter paradise itself is not an easy journey. All of us are going through different tests, isn't it true, right? Tests of patience, tests of wealth, tests of many things. But it is important that we, we are steadfast on the dean, yeah, that we are taking advantage of many things that are happening in our life, especially when we are tested by Allah, that, that we are able to um, do things in the best of manners yeah, in order to please Allah. Yeah. So we are going to go through today, inshallah, um, a, a series of mistakes which people have committed. And always remember, sisters, that I think this is the first Ramadan after a few years that alhamdulillah, we are able to be in the mosque freely, not being afraid of the COVID-19, yeah? Um, that I remember when COVID-19 first um, happened and it was Ramadan, yeah? And the ability not to be able to go to the mosque for the Taraweeh prayer <coughs> was quite devastating, yeah? Um, and even the Eid prayer, I remember we do it at home, the Eid prayer. And this is something that Allah, alhamdulillah, <coughs> has removed this um, obstacle, right? And for now, yeah, that we are able to go to the mosque, that we are able to um, worship Allah again in the mosque, alhamdulillah, yeah, after so many, about two or three years of um, not able to do so, yeah. And we always forget, isn't it true, that, um, and that reminded everybody, right? Like COVID-19 perhaps was our uh, shortcomings that we did, yeah? The sins that we did that Allah has removed the privilege of being able to worship in the mosque. And I still remember very distinctly how sad it was that we cannot go to the mosque at all. It was shut down for how many months, yeah? And now, alhamdulillah, don't forget this, that Allah has given back this privilege of coming to the mosque. It's because we always think, take some granted. Of course, we can always go to the mosque, always. But when COVID-19 occurred about three years ago in 2000, at the end of, or at the beginning of 2020, yeah, then the, the, the restrictions happened, yeah. And subhanAllah, it was, it was unbelievable that we couldn't even leave the house, yeah. And that going to the mosque after, the, the, after about a few months was so precious. And now, alhamdulillah, Allah has given us the ability to go to the mosque again. So don't waste the opportunity yeah, to continue to worship Allah in the mosque, yeah, to do the deeds in the best of manners, yeah, and thank Allah yeah, for alhamdulillah having guiding us, guided us to Islam. Yeah. So let us go through the mistakes that people have made in the past, yeah, or even some of us have made these mistakes. Yeah. Um, Eventually, right, the most important uh, mistake that people made is, first of all, the lack of preparations for Ramadan, yeah? Um, a lot of people think that Ramadan is okay, very easy, just not eat, not drink, what more can I achieve, right? We forget that the month of Ramadan is a month of forgiveness. The hadith is very clear when Jibril alayhi salam appeared yeah, in front of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam eventually said, I mean three times. Right? The Sahaba was quite surprised. What did he say? I mean three times. And one of them 
was when Jibril alayhi salam said, may those people who have who whom Ramadan has passed and the sins are not still not forgiven, may they be in hellfire and cast away. And this is something in which is is quite. When I first came across this hadith, it is it's a scary thing because um, it is supposed to be a month of uh, forgiveness from Allah, a month of mercy. Yeah, and yet you can see many people right are not aware of this. So this is when, as I said, preparations for facing Ramadan is so important. Right, the first of all, first one of course to seek knowledge. What is the importance of Ramadan? Yeah. Uh, we're going to go, go through in detail next time in next lectures, of course. Right? Seek knowledge, what nullifies the fasting, um, the rules of regarding sahur, right? Um, the best things to do before iftar, the fact that, for example, um, well, many people, perhaps when your mother or your aunties are preparing an iftar, you just wait and you know, look at the food or uh, browse through your social media, right? Whereas the one of the best times to make dua is at the time of iftar, right? So don't just wait for the food to come and eat the food, but do make plenty of dua before iftar, subhanallah, right? So it's very important to have this knowledge, especially on the last 10 days of Ramadan, which we call Laylatul Qadar, yeah? How much we we should, yeah, inshallah, um, put all the effort in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Yeah, so is Ramadan for me personally is a uh, a marathon yeah that we we use uh, we are uh, we are given yeah in which at the beginning if you are tired subhanallah well rest at night right if you if you do not feel like going to the uh, especially the sisters where your your house perhaps are not safe to go out at night yeah um then you do not need to go out every night for the the night pay called, called qiyamah lail ya qiyamah lail or the taraweh prayers more commonly known yeah um but in the last 10 nights as the hadith is very clear yeah we should aim to worship allah throughout the night yeah some people who may want to take a leave from work take a leave from work because it's worth it sadly in my culture right Emphasis is much more on Eid than on Ramadan. So in the last 10 hours of Ramadan, people are so busy in the bazaar, shopping for things, preparing the house. Mothers, aunties, sisters are busy preparing the cakes because Ramadan was is celebrated for, uh, sorry, uh, Eid is celebrated for one month. So they spend so much time preparing for Eid in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. How sad it is when it is a night for us of worship not to prepare for Eid. So, and this is when culture itself may may ruin our deen, yeah. So it is important that we seek knowledge about Ramadan, yeah, on what to do and what not to do, inshallah. The next thing that I would advise people to do is to correct our deeds. Right? For example, in our salah, yeah, we want we want to achieve khushu, inshallah, right? From now on, find out ways of how we can improve our khushu. Is it was it because I do not understand the meaning of al fatiha? I don't understand what the meaning of Sami Allah, Liman Hamida. Everything needs to be corrected, inshallah. Yeah. Um, perhaps we are having problems in our recitations. Yeah. The movements are too fast. Remember in the salah. Yeah. If we move too fast, you know, and that our bones are not rested. Yeah. Uh, technically, our salah may be invalid. Yeah. So. All these corrections of our deeds are so important in terms of fasting. It's not just about fasting of the uh, not eating and not drinking, but fasting of the eyes, the ears, now with the social media, your hands, right? <coughs> it's not going through your social media too often yeah, in order for us to, to limit our mistakes in Ramadan. Yeah. Um, other things, for example, for sisters, especially if you have still not um, redo your miss fast last Ramadan, you need to do it quickly, yeah, because you only have about three weeks left, yeah, or four weeks left. Um, so this is to, to, to ensure that you do not commit a major sin by not fasting what you have missed the previous Ramadan. So, but of course, if you have this um, chronic illness, 
including diabetes or whatever it is that, that may make you not able to pay back the fast or to uh, do the miss fast that you had last Ramadan, then you can do this thing called a fitia to pay for the consumption of food. That means for one day of miss fast, you pay for the meal of one person. Yeah. So make sure you, you organize your things properly. Yeah. Your, your life and your events properly before the next Ramadan, inshallah. Right. The next one, of course, is to improve your Quranic recitation. Yeah. Um, or was it was it the brothers and sisters? Can't remember who asked. Is it or should we finish the Quran? My answer is if you are able to finish the Quran, which means to read in Arabic and understand and ponder over the verses and implement, that is the best. If not, personally, I would advise you to read as much as you can with understanding, with the pondering of the verses, with implementation. We, we use the word tadabbur. Yep. This is more important than to rush to the Quran. And after the Quran has finished in Surah number 114, you completely do not understand what you're reading. This is more harmful to us. Right? And remember, the Quran is a guidance. Yeah, when Allah said in the Quran, This is a book. There's no doubt about it. It is a guidance for those who are God conscious. And the fasting itself, right? The, the purpose of fasting, as you know, it is to achieve God consciousness or taqwa. Yes, Allah says in Surah number 2, verse number 183, O oh, you truly believe, fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you so that you may achieve God consciousness. Now, so important that we we realize this, that we, um, many of us forget to analyze ourselves, right? They're so busy criticizing the, in the social media about others, right? But we, for, we forget about looking at ourselves. When we start Ramadan, inshallah, we should start, inshallah, with a clean slate. That means seeking Allah's forgiveness, because when we seek Allah's forgiveness, what happened? Our hearts will be, the impurities will be, removed inshallah right inshallah the height will be shining to get allah's guidance yeah and all this when we said the quran we read about the sirah you will know what to do inshallah for the rest of your journey in this life but the thing about many of us is that we don't do this often most of us are so busy with the social media criticizing others as i say yeah pinpointing all oh, this hijab is not good for this sister, this sister is talking too much, the sister is doing this. And subhanAllah, look at yourself first in the mirror and look at how you can improve yourself. And this is important because at the end of Ramadan, that God consciousness is something in which you must be very wary about because it is an ability, as Allah said in Surah number um, 49, verse number 13 in the middle part that the one who is honored by Allah is the one who has taqwa honored inshallah which means we get Allah's mercy and will be admitted into paradise and this is the the essence of Ramadan yeah to achieve taqwa to achieve on that basis to clean your heart to achieve forgiveness from Allah and inshallah will lead us to Jannah. And all this, only you are able to analyze yourselves. Not, nobody is able to analyze for you, correct? And if you don't do this, then you have failed in your ability, we call it to, to keep yourself into account. As we call it uh, many times, the word is called Al-Muhasaba. Yeah, Al-Muhasaba, which means to keep yourself into account. All of us keep into account of our things, right? Um, for example, now with the, with the bills, too much of the gas and electricity, I do not on switch on the gas and electricity every time because I know if I'll do it all the time, then the bills will get high. So I keep into account only when I will tell my wife, only when the temperature reaches two degrees, then we switch on the, we should switch on the heater. If not, it must be off. Um, in terms of our um, 
internet data and our mobile phones, right? I can just watch the Islamic videos all the time when I'm on the tube and all this because it would finish. I only have, I think, about 10 gig of um, to of data available, right? If I do it all the time, then it would not, by the time in the middle of the month, right, it would be finished, yeah? So this thing about al-muhasaba came into account is, is nothing new. It's what we have done all the time, but now it's about keeping a, a track of our deeds, our sins, being honest with ourselves, look back and try to correct ourselves yeah, and seek knowledge and how to improve ourselves right for sure right somebody was asking me was it yesterday or some of the classes um how okay this, this is a very simple question yeah how do you increase the fear of the unseen right the unseen or the ghaib are plenty, right? Allah is the unseen. We haven't, we have not, and we will not see Allah until we enter Jannah, inshallah. The shaitan is not, is, is the unseen yet. The day of judgment is the unseen. The angels, left and right, and everywhere around, the, around us, yeah, are the unseen. So he was asking me, how do we increase the uh, belief in the unseen. Answer is quite simple, actually, right? First of all, of course, to seek Allah's guidance, because the belief in the heart is something in which only Allah will guide us to believe. For sure, Subhanallah, like the sister that took shahada just now, yeah, in our class. Um, I, actually, I, I was almost convinced that she was a Muslim yesterday. Yeah, but Alhamdulillah, sister Lisa, to make her more convinced about herself, about so she. Um, it's what in, is inside you with Allah's guidance that makes you believe in everything, right? So seek Allah's guidance at all times, very important, right? Because, yes, I think people have these impressions, for example, let's say you're on the underground, nobody sees you, okay, uh, let me enter the gate. Uh, it's quite irritating, people enter the gate of the underground, just forcing themselves, you know the gate where, where the, when the babies or the buggies entered, they just force themselves in because nobody sees. But in reality, knowing Allah's names, Tawheed, yeah, Allah is Al-Alim, the All-Knower, Al-Khabir, the All-Aware, Al-Basir, the all uh, the all seer. Allah knows everything that we do, yeah. So again, this is song from Tawheed, yeah, from understanding who Allah is. That must be the first criteria. And of course, seeking Allah's guidance when we say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. When Allah guides us, Allah will guide us to understand the unseen about the Day of Judgment, which we are going, all of us will have appointment with Allah. As Allah said in Surah number 4, verse number 87, Allah hu la ilaha illa hu, la yajma'annakum illa yawmil qiyamati, la rayba fi. Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but you. Surely, he will gather you together on the day of resurrection in which there's no doubt about it. So when you have something which is no doubt, what must we do? Prepare, right? If you are not, if we don't prepare now, then on the day of judgment, it is your fault. You are not preparing for the day of judgment. And remember, we only have one chance. <laughs> Thirdly, of course, we have Allah's guidance to the Quran. Yeah, Quran explains many things. Again, the Quran started very, very clearly in the second verse. As I said just now, at, after Alif Lam Mim, al raiba fi muttaqin. Some of the reverts when they took shahada, the, the one of the first things that made the Quran outstanding is this particular verse. With such boldness, Allah declared that this is the book. Remember in Al Fatiha in chapter number one, we say, eh dina Sirat al Mustaqim. Guide us, Ya Allah, to the straight path. And Allah ans was answering our du'a. You want guidance? This is the guidance, right? That's what Allah said. This is the book. Yeah. la There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And uh, muttaqin, a guidance for those who are God conscious, who are who are taqwa. So when you read the Quran, surely you will come across verses in relation to the angels, right? In relation to the jinns, in relation to the, the unseen, yeah. The relation to the day of judgment, yeah, many many things. Allah, so when Allah said, "There's no doubt," 
that means it will come the day of judgment. That means there is such thing as angels, right? The prophets whom we have not seen before, especially Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So that's what he said, right? He was telling his Sahaba, yeah, I, I really, really long to see my, my beloved. Then the companions was confused. They thought that they are his beloved. And they said, we are here. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no. You're not my beloved. You're my companions. My beloved are those who come after you. They have not seen me, but they still believe in me. And this is how it is. Whatever things that we have in our heart, right, it is all due to Allah's guidance. So don't waste time to do things that are not beneficial for the hereafter. Remember, we are invisible for a very short time. Whatever things that we have, it is to worship Allah. As Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Surah number 51, verse number 56, which means I created jinn and mankind except I do not create jinn and mankind except that they should worship me. This is our purpose of life. There's no other purpose in this life. The work that we do, the children that we have, the functions, it is to worship Allah. Correct? Any money that we have, inshallah, it is used to feed our families. It is a form of worship. It is to save, to go to Hajj, inshallah. It's a form of worship. Yeah, And this is a form of worship with the intention that we earn this money not because we want to buy another big house, not because we want to buy another big car, right? It is to save the money for the hereafter. This is, must be our intention because you remember the hadith intention? Actions are judged by your intention and you will judge according to what you have intended. So if you intend, for example, to wake up in the morning <coughs> and to take a shower, because you like to be clean in front of Allah, right? To pray later, you get all the rewards of your showering and your brushing of teeth, yeah. And because, but but if you wake up and take a shower because you just want to go to work and please your boss, you don't get any reward. So your intention is very important, and the whole life that we do, that that we lead from the time that we wake up in the morning to the time that we sleep, everything must be for the purpose of worshipping Allah. That is what Allah said in Surah number 67, verse number 2. Um, that He created death and life so that He may test you which one of us are best in deeds. Yet, the deeds that we do, subhanAllah, inshaAllah, will be sufficient, yeah, inshaAllah, yeah, to make sure that we gain Allah's mercy. None of us can enter Jannah except with His mercy. Yeah. So this is the things that we need to do. Yeah. Um, to prepare for Ramadan. Yeah. The mistakes is that people are not doing this. Yeah. In month of Sha'ban, what is the month for Sha'ban? It is to do more fasting in this month of Sha'ban. Yeah. Perhaps the the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know from the Hadith, yeah, that he never fasted in any other month more days. Then in the month of Sha'ban, except Ramadan, of course, yeah. And the next day, the next month that he fasted the most after Ramadan is the month of Sha'ban, yeah. So shouldn't we? I mean, we talked about how <coughs> we want to obey the Prophet Muhammad, uh, to obey Allah and Pro obey Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And Allah has um, informed us in Surah number three, yeah, in verse number um, thirty. One, yeah, قل, قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم. Say Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم to mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me. If you do so, then Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins, and Allah is often forgiving the most merciful. Now this is important. That following the Sunnah, what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has done, itself we gain Allah's love and Allah's forgiveness. This Allah said in Surah number 3, verse number 31. So please don't be lazy. 
right? This is the month of Sha'ban. When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is fasting a lot in the month of Sha'ban, we should try to do as best as possible, inshallah. Um, Maghrib is still relatively early, yeah? Is, I think, I think before 6 in the right? So it's not, it's not that long yet, yeah? So we should try to fast at least Mondays and Thursdays, yeah? As, or in 13, 14, and 15 altogether, yeah? In order to follow the sunnah. As I said yesterday, the rule of thumb is this. If you have not fasted by the 15th of Sha'ban, so that means you have not started from the 1st of Sha'ban to 15th of Sha'ban, and the 15th of Sha'ban has come, then you're not allowed to fast until Ramadan comes. However, if you have started fasting, then you can, can continue to fast after 15th of Sha'ban and stop, for example, about two days before Ramadan starts, just to differentiate between Ramadan and Sha'ban. Yeah? So, <clears throat> so this is part of preparations for Ramadan, which uh, a lot of people are not doing. Yeah? Um, start also lastly, right? One before Ramadan even, to lessen or uh, to, to spend less time on the social media. Yeah, it is, including myself, I raise up my hand, right? It is a time consuming um, thing to be on social media, on your internet, that may waste your time. It may, you, not, you, are, you may not be looking at things that is haram, of course, but it's just a waste of time. And this is one of the traps of shaitan, that people are doing things that are not useful for the hereafter. Yeah, looking at cats, photo, dogs, videos, um, travel vlogs and all this. Yeah, so <coughs> control yourself right, with the social media, control your tongue Yeah, before Ramadan comes. So all these um, are important for the preparations of Ramadan, which people like ignoring. Lastly, yeah, as part of preparations of Ramadan, I know it's difficult, especially for sisters, not sure why, right? Um, start to forgive others. Start to forgive others whom perhaps they may have wronged you. None of us are perfect and we are expecting Allah to forgive us because of Allah's names, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Therefore, you and I should start yeah, to forgive others if you want Allah to forgive us on the day of judgment. Yeah. So for you yourself, of course, yeah, I would always ask before Ramadan comes, send emails, send group messages to everybody to forgive you of your sins. And so you you use you ask others to forgive you, at the same time you start to forgive others, inshallah. Right? So all this is part of the Ramadan preparation. So during Ramadan itself. What are the common mistakes that people face? As I said just now in the beginning of the talk, people are taking just easy, right? Um, Ramadan is just a ritual, right? In in my part of the world, is a is a stepping stone for the Eid celebration, right? So they are busy buying new clothes, right? Uh, preparing food for iftar, yeah. Um, people are starting to send, go to the tailor to tailor their clothes for Eid. Yeah, everything that is not relevant to Ramadan, people are starting to practice it in Ramadan. It's completely wrong right? because we have to. Yes, of course, Eid is important. Yeah, but more important is what we have achieved in Ramadan. Remember, we talked about month of Rajab was a month of swaying of the seeds. This, this month of Sha'ban was a month of irrigation of the seeds. And the month of Ramadan is to, to harvest, harvest the things that we have planted in Rajab. Yeah? That means getting the reward. What reward would you gain by going shopping and um, buying more food and all this? Yeah? So it is important that we take Ramadan more seriously, not just a ritual. Yeah? This is a month, the month of Ramadan, subhanAllah, was the month where the Quran was revealed, yeah? A month of seeking forgiveness. Allah is so merciful that the shaitan is locked up, yeah? It's a month to feed the, and help the poor. So many, many things that we can achieve in Ramadan. So do not waste the Ramadan, yeah? By doing things that are not beneficial for um, the hereafter, inshallah, yeah? Um, other things is, of course, in Ramadan itself, people fail to control the tongue. 
Yeah, especially when they are fasting. Remember, we have been advised in the hadith, whenever anybody annoy us, annoy us in the month of Ramadan, don't lose your temper. Just say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Yeah. And because perhaps the tongue that you say, yeah, may be able to invalidate your fasting, the things that you say. So do, do be careful of the hadith. I think it was from uh, uh, narrative of Al Hakim and Al Ibn Khuzayma, where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, perhaps someone fasting, his share is only hunger and thirst. Hunger and thirst. So you achieve nothing at all, no reward except being hungry and being thirsty. And how sad it is, especially when in summer. Remember in summer when we have to fast for at least 18 hours in UK. Yeah. Um, another hadith was from uh, another reported by Bukhari, where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that whoever does not abandon false words and deeds, Allah has no need for him to leave his food and drink. That means Allah do not need our fasting. Yet, yeah. remember the reward of fasting. Yes, yeah, sisters, that fasting, subhanAllah, the reward, the hadith, if I can remember the hadith Qudsi, Allah said, when, 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 when my servant did any good deeds, he get the reward of at least 10 to 700 times, except fasting. Fasting is for me, so I will reward him accordingly. So that means, subhanAllah, we are, we are allowed to eat and drink, but just simply to obey Allah in the month of Ramadan, for the whole month, we don't eat and we don't drink to so Allah is huge because we we can eat and drink right in a halal way of course yeah but because of Allah we obey him that's why the reward of fasting is huge is all Allah will reward us accordingly so the last thing that we want to do right it is to make our fasting invalid and even the, the Salaf will say the easiest part of fasting, right? It is to keep away from food and drink. So not eating, not drinking is the easiest part of fasting. But more difficult is about the fasting of the eyes, the ears, the, our nerves, yeah? Um, now with social media, our hands, yeah? We, we should control them, inshallah, yeah? Um, so be, be, be careful when you talk about others uh, lying, right? It's got common people still lie in Ramadan when you're fasting, using foul languages, um, raising your voice, yeah. The next one, common mistake is too much focus on the food and the drinks. Yeah, for sure, right? In some cultures, moms would spend time um, in the market every day in the morning to think, mm, what do I cook for iftar, right? And then after that, not only that, we have to, have to, we have to cook another, food, another dish for the sahur. <coughs> then what drinks do I buy, right? What what drinks do I make? So, so much emphasis on food and drink. And as I said before, do give a break. And I told the brothers yesterday, give a break to your sisters, to your mothers who are always preparing food. Make sure you, you yourself advise them, right? To focus on Quranic recitations, yeah? And to concentrate on the Taraweh prayer. Because subhanAllah, when, when the boys and the brothers are all doing the Taraweh prayer, the women are busy cleaning the house, and this is not correct, yeah, because Ramadan is for everybody, not just for the brothers, for the men, yeah, it's for the women too, yeah, to ensure that your deen is kept intact and make sure that you are forgiven, yeah, in the month of Ramadan, yeah. Um, the next one is, of course, people, some people are sleeping the whole day and wasting time, yeah. This is where, sorry to say that this is in the Arab culture usually, because uh, the, I think their work are quite lenient on the Ramadan. Some of them are given work only half a day. So they spend the whole night eating. You can see all the restaurants open at night in Ramadan. I was there before a few times in Ramadan. Everybody was eating at night. And subhanAllah, the day they, they spend the time sleeping. That's not how Ramadan is supposed to be, or fasting is supposed to be in Ramadan. Yeah? We are supposed to lead a, a usual lives, right? As, as if we, there's no, we are not fasting, right? And this is how we should lead a life, yeah, reading the Quran. Remember, fasting is one of the best times that we make dua, especially before our, our the iftar, that we should uh, make dua a lot, yeah, in the day, yeah, when we are fasting. Um, another common mistake, of course, um, sorry, and we know also from a hadith, yeah, where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, at every breaking of fast, remember this, at every breaking of the fast, 
Allah has people whom he redeems from the hellfire and that happens every night. Narrated by Ibn Bajah and class Sahih by uh, Sheikh Al Dhani, Rahimullah. Yeah, I repeat again at the breaking of fast, Allah has people whom he redeems from hellfire and that happens every night. So when when comes to the breaking of fast, don't just eat, but before one, two minutes, make dua to Allah, Rabbana atina fituna hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhabana. Yeah, to ask Allah to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. Yeah. Um, so, next one, skipping sahur, right? Um, sahur is important. Hadith is very clear from Bukhari Muslim that Prophet Muhammad Sallam said that it's sahur, for in sahur there is a blessing, right? So sahur does, doesn't even mean having a three-course meal. Having a, a cup of water is a sahur, right? Or milk is a sahur. So do wake up, if you, if you are quite lazy to eat, at least wake up five minutes before Fajr, right? And eat, uh, uh, drink something, and that's called sahur, yeah? Um, another thing is about intention. Your intention for Ramadan, for fasting, must be done before Fajr. Must be done before Fajr. So in, intention is not just about, I intend to fast for the sake of Allah, remember? It's about... For example, if you set up alarm clock to wake up for, for sahur, that is intention. If you drink water before you sleep, just in case you cannot wake up, that is your intention. Yeah, You can intend to fast for the whole month before Ramadan starts. Yeah, That means, that's, let's say tomorrow is Ramadan, tonight I intend to fast for the whole month. That is your intention. Or every day you do it, so uh, intention from your heart uh, before Fajr. Yeah, For sunnah fasting, you can do it after the uh, even after uh, Fajr, because through the hadith of Prophet Muhammad when he asked his wife Aisha, Ranana, is there any food today? And his wife said, no, there's no food today in the house. Then I'm going to fast today. So on that basis, it was an indication of fasting, the intention for fasting, a sunnah fast can be done after Fajr. Okay. Now the next one is, of course, there is a word in my culture, perhaps in some Asian cultures, that a word called imsak has appeared. That means 10 minutes before Fajr time, you must stop eating. Now, this is an innovation from Sheikh Ibn Muthaymin, yeah, who is Rahimullah, he said this in a kind of innovation. There's no basis in the Sunnah. Um, so you can eat all the way until Fajr time. Yeah, so that means for, is Fajr is about 5 o'clock, you can eat all the way until 4 uh, 59, yeah, and then you stop, yeah, so there's no such thing as an imsak that you stop uh, 10 minutes before Fajr time, yeah, um, this is a common mistake, next one, oh, I missed my sahur, I don't think I want to fast, no such thing, right, if you are not eating, not drinking, alhamdulillah, inshallah, you will not die, isn't it, but you're not eating for 14, 15 hours and not drinking even, yeah, Remember, right? Um, of course, it's the qarab of Allah, right? Perhaps you do not wake up for sahur, you overslept, yeah? But do not miss fasting just because you miss your sahur, yeah? This is sometimes, especially for me, um, in order to save God, if I might be tired of the taraweeh prayer because Islam and Mosque, they pray for two hours, one whole uh, juice for the taraweeh prayer. Sometimes before I sleep, I would drink a lot of water just in case I missed, I missed the sahur, yeah? Um, Another common um, mistake is say the intention loud. People will say, I am fasting tomorrow for the sake of Allah. Fasting is from the heart or true actions. As I said, uh, to set up alarm clock, to drink to drink your milk or to eat your porridge before sahur, before fajr, that is intention already, yeah, to fast. Now, another um, quite common mistake, I'm quite surprised that people are fasting but not praying, yeah, it's, it's is really un unacceptable because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Hadith of Muslim, between a man and shirk and kufr is where there stands his giving of prayer. That means prayer uh, would be an indication between a man and kufr and disbelief, right? I'm not here to judge, of course, and I I've seen it a few times, people who are not praying but they're fasting, right? If the reason that they're not praying because where they didn't believe, you know, in praying is 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 obligatory, then they can lead their own lives as according to the, what they want, and then for sure this person has fall into disbelief. But with a reason for not praying, perhaps because of the um, weakness of iman, 
but they feel very guilty, then it's a different story. Yeah, so do advise people whom you know, right? You need to fulfill the obligations of prayer first. Yeah, because prayer is the first thing that we're going to be asked by Allah on the day of judgment. The next one, people are not fasting because exams are work. Right? Exams is exams, right? For sure, we must understand ability for us to earn money, ability for us to pass our exams, all comes from Allah. How can you miss your fasting because you have an exam? Yeah. Allah said in Surah number 12, verse number 21, and last part, Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. Allah has the full power and control of all of his affairs. Walakinna akhtaran nasi la ya'lamun. But most men can do not know about this. So important, yeah, that we we truly understand, yeah, that doesn't matter if our children have any have exams, he must fast. Right? It's not an excuse to miss any fasting because of exams. <laughs> yeah. Um, Another thing that people commonly make mistakes is that um, intention of fasting is to lose weight, full stop. Yeah? Don't mix up intention with anything else. Intention of fasting is for the sake of Allah, full stop. If at that moment of time you happen to lose weight, alhamdulillah, right, it's an added bonus, then you'll be more healthy to worship Allah, inshallah. But don't make the intention, uh, alhamdulillah, Ramadan is coming, then I can lose weight. Never make this intention because remember, Actions are judged by your intention. You'll get rewarded only according to what you have intended. Yeah. So make sure that you focus your intention only to please Allah to fast. The next one is people are focusing too much on the Taraweh prayers, especially the brothers. They're so obsessed with Taraweh prayers that they miss their Fajr because they're so tired that they miss their perhaps uh, inshat prayer because they spend too much time eating. But Taraweh prayer, they must come. Right? Qiyam or Taraweh is a sunnah. And we must understand this. Of course, is we try, must try to do as best as possible, inshallah. But obligatory prayers must be uphold, must be upheld first. That means you must focus to concentrate and have khushu in doing all the obligatory prayers on time in congregations, inshallah. Yeah, doing Ramadan. Then as a bonus, inshallah, then perform the Taraweh prayer. Yeah. Um, sometimes another common mistake people are fighting over the row, especially in the 27th Ramadan, yeah, claiming that 27th is the night of Laylatul Qadar. There is hadith, of course, but that's not a, a final hadith. Laylatul Qadar can be can be made in any parts can 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 fall in any parts of the last ten days of Ramadan. <laughs> I'm sure you know about the, the hadith that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself, actually he, he was informed by Allah when exactly would be Layatul Qadar. But because he was busy, I think he was resolving a dispute between two brothers, that he forgot about this. He forgot about this, which is good for us, because if not, if Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, oh, Layatul Qadar is on the 27th night, then everybody would, would ignore Taraweh prayer except 27th night. Right? So, do focus on every night, if you can, right, to do your Taraweh prayer, especially the last 10 nights, inshallah, right, focus more. And of course, especially on the odd nights, according to the hadith, yeah. <laughs> Lastly, for in terms of the um, mistakes of Ramadan, people are wasting the last part of nights of Ramadan preparing for Eid. Yeah, coming to my culture, right? As I said just now, preparing for Eid, going to the bazaar, cleaning the house at night, yeah, making cakes in last ten of Ramadan, rather than worshiping Allah, right? Um, and people are having iftar parties even the last ten of Ramadan. If you want to have iftar parties, there's no, there's, it, it's not a problem. You can have it inviting your family members, members to your house, um, perhaps in the first two, first twenty days, twenty nights of Ramadan. But after that, that's it. Focus on yourself because it's a, it may be the night when you're having parties and talking and laughing. Yeah, it was a night of Latul Qadar. Instead of spending the time worshiping Allah, you're spending the time eating and laughing. Yeah, so do uh, make sure that the um, ensure yeah that the um, Ramadan itself is kept intact. Inshallah, that you're able to do the deeds in the best of manners. Lastly, right. After Ramadan, the common mistakes that people think that oh, Ramadan is over, alhamdulillah. 
back to my old self, back to my old routine. One of the signs that Ramadan is accepted is, of course, that you are different. How can you be the same person when Allah has forgiven your sins? Secondly, when inshallah Ramadan would increase your taqwa. You'd be more God conscious. For the brothers especially, go to the mosque to pray. Yeah, But sadly, every year is the same story. At the night or the day after Ramadan, right? that means their eighth day for Fajr prayer, the mosque reduced from nine, ten rows to two rows. And this is, happens every year. Right. Um, and this is how we we have to really understand yeah, um, that we do need to make dua to Allah yeah, to make our steadfast on the deen. Yeah, for, so for example, make dua to Allah. Yeah. Um, oh, you who changes the heart, make my heart for the deen. Followed by the dua in surah number three, verse number eight, Rabbana la tuzil qulubana. Our Rob, do not deviate us from the truth after you have guided us and grant us your mercy. Mercy, surely you are the bestower. Yeah. So we have been taught in many parts of the Quran how to make dua to Allah to ensure that we are on the deen. Another dua, for example, um, is Allahumma inni as alukal huda wa tuqa wal afafa wal ghina. Yeah. Um, our Rob grant us um, guidance, taqwa, chastity, and free from the needs of others. Yeah. So all this dua, inshallah, it is an opportunity for us to be steadfast on the deen. That, that, that word is taqama. A lot of scholars say this is very difficult, right? Remember how Iblis, yeah, Iblis was so pious to Allah, and he forgot, right, that he wasn't dead yet. Yeah, that he was still alive when he disobeyed. People think, and these are people with no knowledge, when they have, oh, I'm so obedient to Allah. I've been elevated to such a high status. Therefore, I have the ability to choose whatever things I want to do. Remember, Islam means complete submission to Allah. That it is up to, it's not up to you and me to choose what we want to submit. We must submit to Allah completely. Yeah, and this is why, sisters, we do need to take advantage and we need to thank Allah, of course, first of all, for guiding all of us to Islam, yeah, for um, giving us the time that we are still alive. Whereas a brother, my student, a few days ago just passed away, yeah. Um, some people are still on the journey to find out about Islam. I mean, Allah do, um, grant another brother who will take shahada on, uh, on on Monday. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our sister who just took shahada in the beginning of the class to Islam. Yeah. Now, any questions before we leave, sisters? Anybody? Is it clear? Yeah. So please make dua for the sister. I think Shin Yi, yeah, it was her name. Um, who came to our class yesterday that Allah will guide her completely in the right path. Yeah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us with the ability to, to to meet the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom He will be pleased with on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins and shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, remove the test of uh, that is inflicting some of us, yeah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us patience for those who are tested by Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good health, yeah, and the ability, yep, to enter Jannatul Firdaus. Jazakum al khair, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shadu ala ila anta, wa asakhruka wa atubu subhanahu wa ta'ala, rabbil izzata ma yasifun, wa asalamu al mursalin, wa hamdul bar alamin, asalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, inshallah, I will, I will send to you the uh, dua of those of course, the sujud tilawah, yeah, um, and also for the jenazah for inshallah, yeah. Asalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum as